had a question from someone about the difference between health anxiety and health OCD and that this is a confusing topic for many people uh, as you can see online and yeah I think some thoughts on this one would be um, there can be confusion because some people are taking definitions from DSM-5 over in the, the States and then in the UK and Europe it might be ICD-11 and there's a lot of overlap between these diagnostic uh, books uh, or manuals but there's also quite a bit of uh, subtle difference as well and I guess this points at the issue with um, uh, categorizing disorders in that uh, you know, these books are the best attempt at summarizing these different clusters of symptoms and processes. And I think personally, I feel there is a lot of good stuff within them and they can clarify and they can distinguish certain patterns that then help us um, work on the treatment methods. You know, at a very basic level, we all who've experienced them know that anxiety and depression do feel very different and they do feel like distinct things. But I guess the critique of these diagnoses is that even within these big buckets, there can be so many different versions and um, different ways anxiety or depression will show up. And, and are they one single thing or are they combinations of processes? And I think in the acceptance and commitment therapy world, Steve Hayes is, is sort of pushing more towards this process view of mental health. And, you know, that's trying to really identify and distinguish the processes. So that's worth holding in mind that, you know, the diagnoses are the best attempt to summarise complex information and it's been layered on itself over many years and there's some subtle differences between America and Europe and other, other places. That being said, the way I interpret it is health anxiety, you have this sort of distinguishing feature that um, it, it tends to be that people with this disorder are very focused only on this topic. So versus health OCD, there might be other OCD um, intrusive thoughts and themes that are coming up. Uh, health anxiety in DSM-5 is classified in really into illness anxiety disorder and somatic symptom disorder. And illness anxiety is there's no physical symptoms or only mild ones and we're sort of worrying about developing them and checking them. Somatic symptom disorder is more you have these symptoms and we are thinking worst case scenario. So any pain I have in my body is cancer versus illness anxiety disorder. We don't have so much things like that, but we're just worrying about getting cancer. Um, and then sometimes with health OCD, it's also distinguished as having this more ritualistic um, behavior. I mean, personally, I don't like that because that's a little bit like saying OCD is only doing these ritualistic behaviors. But what about the subtypes that are categorized as pure OCD, which have the mental compulsion of rumination that might not be very ritualistic. It might just be analytical thinking. So. All this is to say that that really there's a massive overlap between all these things. I mean, I've heard great experts like John Hirschfield say that he really sees these all as one bucket, you know, including generalized anxiety disorder. I think you could, you know, really group these things together. And from an ACT and ERP perspective for recovery, the treatment's the same, the way we're approaching them is the same. And I think you want to watch that you're not really analyzing and getting into the sort of detail of of you know these disorders because it could be that that becomes a compulsion you know we're trying to to sort of figure all of this out and actually we're just analyzing what's going on and researching online and this is all compulsions trying to solve you know the disorder versus using um our act skills or mindfulness skills from other places dbt metacognitive um, MBCT, these sorts of approaches, plus exposure and response prevention. Um, uh, I think people talk about insight in this, but I mean, I think you can have health anxiety with varying degrees of insight. 
into how realistic you think it is or isn't. And you can have OCD with varying degrees of insight. So I don't really like that distinguishing factor really either. And, um, you know, I would see them as that, you know, they're, they're similar processes. It might be that um, with health anxiety, we're really only on this topic. Or although even that, you know, I struggle with because most clients, I mean, I've rarely seen someone who really is on that single topic, you know, normally they have anxiety in other areas of their life. Um, so I, I would say really just seeing them all as a similar, you know, intrusive thoughts about health with various triggers, sometimes triggers of actual perceived symptoms, sometimes triggers of just worrying about this uncertainty. Then we have compulsions that are often mental, you know, we're ruminating, worrying, analyzing, and often we're checking and hyper aware, hyper focused and monitoring what's going on in our body. And then we might be doing things in the outside world, the research, the reassurance seeking or the avoidance of medical checks. You know, you split it that way as well. And um, we might be doing a lot of health based behaviors in a very compulsive sort of anxious way, trying to prevent any illness might be paying a lot of money to medical professionals to get various checks and confirmation. Um, when I was going through this more intensely, I sort of just felt experientially like it was very much the same thing. You know, it was, it, I'd had a lot of OCD themes and then, I developed, I'd had some health anxiety throughout my life, and then I really zoomed in on, on it later in my recovery journey. And it felt exactly like harm and taboo OCD themes and other puro stuff I'd had. The way it felt experientially and, and, and within myself was the same. So I, I, I think of them very much in the same place and use the same methods of um, building up skills, so building up our act skills so that we can diffuse these worried thoughts and we can reduce the threat monitoring and get more an external focus on values. You might want to look at my OCD skills playlist and we'd be doing things like dipping in and out of the stream for the rumination and the threat monitoring those practices. We, If we're very intensely in it at the beginning, we might be doing a lot of dropping anchor for overwhelm and behavioral, you know, values-based behavior plans. So that we're just trying to get active, engaged in life and not so caught up in this struggle then we might progress to these, these skill-based methods of dipping in and out of the stream and deepening diffusion acceptance. And then we're moving into ERP and that might be imaginal exposure to things that are triggers. We might then, as we progress in skills, be looking at videos and uh, reading accounts of illness and, and difficulties like that. If there's any sort of trauma in it, you know, for myself, I was diagnosed with epilepsy. I, I think it was a misdiagnosis. I think I had panic disorder and OCD, but anyway, I, I was given a, a sort of epilepsy diagnosis. And I think that was very traumatic as a little kid. It put, you know, I had these experiences of being scanned and, um, you know, sedated and then EG'd. And I think it was all very traumatic, not to mention how my parents were perhaps worrying about it in the background. And I think sometimes we have to work on that trauma with, exposure and act skills or other approaches to exposure with a professional and self-compassion to all of that as well. And I'll probably do some more videos on health anxiety and things that help, but that's a, a sort of summary of the things that I think are really useful. So you don't want to just launch into the health anxiety exposure without any response prevention skills. I've seen that with many clients who come to me who are actually just watching these videos and ended up ruminating and learning more about illness really, and then scanning and, and ruminating and worrying and putting that all into their compulsions. So you need skills to work with the mental compulsions first, and then you're moving in, into exposure to deepen that over time, and then learning how to approach your health in a, a values-based way and a, a way that fits with research and, and what's advised by doctors versus constant scanning, checking, monitoring, worrying, or complete avoidance of that. So in summary, 
yes, they are distinguished in the various uh, diagnostic manuals, but I would just see it all as the same. And sometimes it has more ritualistic, sometimes more or less insight, sometimes only on health. Sometimes there are wider, you know, range of themes and sometimes the themes can blend. You can have health with moral scrupulosity. If I don't take care of my health, I'm a bad person and I'll let my family down. And, you know, you can have this blending of themes and things as well. Uh, but really, we don't need to worry too much about that classification, you know, speak to your professional, take that on board from whatever they say, but then work on the treatment and the recovery. And that's really the key bit. And watch out for any analysis and worrying about classifying and distinguishing and what's what and what's what. That could all be the sort of meta OCD about the recovery process. So diffuse all of that and start moving towards values.